Hello everyone and welcome to our latest hit of Rugby Nation. I'm Sean Maloney and with me as always, Ian Payton, back for week number two, Brendan McKibbo. Kibbo, you did a, such a good job last week. You thought, hey, throw the Super Rugby champion back in the mix, let him at it to wrap up the regular season. It's done and dusted the reg season, we're on to the finals. Yeah, we are. I think, you know, there's probably no one else there, which is why I'm back here talking That's rugby, no, but true. I enjoyed it. That's I enjoyed not it. true. There was a there was a <laughs> onslaught of viewer feedback saying, bring us more, Kibo. Yeah, and Let's less Gug. Gug. So Justin Harrison, for the moment, is away on the Gold-Blooded Tour. We'll get to what that's all about a little bit later in the show. Right now, though, let's talk about the Brumbies. They are the sole Australian representative in the finals. So the makeup for the QFs, four Kiwi sides, three from the SA Conference, one from the Aussie. But the mm -hmm. Brumbies look like they could do some damage. They were strong last week again against the Reds, Kibo. Yeah, I think, you know, the Brumbies at home, they probably only lost lost one game at home. And, you know, they were they were powerful. They were dominant. You know, they went away from their set piece the week before and they, they showed what they can do around the set piece time. They absolutely destroyed the Reds around scrum and more. They're efficient, aren't they? And that's what you want to be at this time of year. They, they can turn their hand to any number of styles. Uh, we've seen that in the last couple of weeks. And they can, you know, adapt on the run. They even did that during the game. They tried to go early, wide, uh, yeah. early, uh, wide, early. Pardon me. I'll get it out. It wasn't working. Went tight. Went back to the set piece, as you say. So impressive. Um, home final would be a big one for them. That's a big advantage, as as Kibo could probably tell us more about. But playing at home is really important in the Super Rugby final. Yeah, it is. And good luck to the Sharks coming over from sunny Durban to yeah, a cold right. Canberra Eve. Yeah, there's a few of those South African sides on the road. So the Sharks come down here and the Bulls head off to uh, Hurricane Town. Back to the Brumbies again quickly, though. Uh, I reckon you've touched on it really well, guys. In the lead-up, if you use that first try that Muirhead scores, uh, the lead-up work, it just seems like the little things they're doing, they recycled so quickly, they hit the breakdown nice, short and sharp, gave them a quick ball out the back, and then that sort of got them back into the fight after trailing early on, and then away they went. Yeah, look, I think that the Brumbies, the way they're going in attack and defence, they're, they're putting pressure on sides. And, you know, you saw a couple of runaway try there from their defence. You know, they're forcing opposition to make poor decisions and they're capitalising on it. Taniel Tupo almost, <laughs> well, he almost eviscerated Christian yeah. Liliofano. Obliterated him as well. <laughs> eviscerated and obliterated. It was a huge shot. He caught yellow for it. But again, just another reminder of how tough Christian Liliofano is. How he got up off the back of that shot, I don't know. Yeah, and that wasn't one um, where Christian stayed down to milk a penalty either. You know, see those ones that where someone gets hit you know, around and they roll around on the ground. Some play for the Sharks that, that we mentioned. Um, Ned, um, Jed Holloway found out there's no such thing as back play. But Christian, he was uh, he was genuinely hurt. He got his, his, his shoulder squeezed up. But you're right, got, got back up and, and continued playing on. And, and he's so important for that team. Like you, we talk about the ability to adapt, it's all coming out of that fulcrum of, of Christian. You know whether he looks looks out or looks in for his options and tells the Fords what he wants. Um, some of the form his career, and um, you know it, it's a shame that he's announced this week that he's this will be his last year. Um, but you know he's such a, a good fella. The, the reception's been very much like, well, good on you, Christian. You know, all the best to you. You've, you've done your service for Brumbies rugby. Everyone loves Lily Fano, don't they, Kibo? They do. And there's not a chance I'm getting up after that hit. That guy's an absolute <laughs> missile. So, yeah, Christian's a tough character. Fair play to him on getting up after that. So he'll be huge this weekend. They take on the Sharks at home Saturday night. That game set to unfold will be cold down in Canberra, a long way from Durban for the Sharkies, who actually travel. Travelled okay when they came across through regular season play down here in Australia. They managed to get it working, went close in New Zealand to rolling the Crusaders in Christchurch and very nearly pushed the Chiefs as well. So they'll come in, they'll be looking okay. They get there off the back of a narrow win last week against the Stormers. Who from the Brumbies are we looking at this weekend to help turn the Shorkies? Who's got to come up big for the Brumbies? Well, I mean, interestingly, the Beast is not coming, mm. which is a real blow for them. So um, I think they'll look to that front row. The f it's, there's not just three. You've got Slips coming on now as well. Um, so CO, Alalatoa, Slipper and Follow Foinga, that's where, you know, if you were going to beat an African team, you start there mm. and you work backwards. I'll start from the back. Those, the, the, well, that's the, what I was hoping we'd have the back, that little offset. The back, yep. three, the back three are slippery, and then you add Kuandrani, who gets over the advantage line nine times out of ten. Um, they're powerful and they're potent. You know, if the Sharks kick 
poorly, the Brumbies will counter. Uray Samani seems to be slowly growing in confidence. We've seen him check his form a little bit through the early part of the year. Has looked a little bit better and a little more polished towards the back end of the year. And uh, chance as well too for Pulu to come back in. Tom Wright, who did all right on the it's wing. Really, I mean, not known yeah. as a not known as a winger. He was pretty handy the other night as well. So we'll see what happens in terms of selection there. Tell you but what, they do well, and they may be able to have some success against um, the Sharks is they attack back in the around the ruck so it'll get out to Christian come back or they'll play uh, you know Tom Wright's break mm -hmm. up the middle there that the Brumbies are doing that better than any Aussie team coming back to the to play on the inside which um, can expose a big African forward um, you know late in the game they'll get in that game as rightful favorites so too will the Crusaders who host the Highlanders in uh, our first Cup QF this weekend, or first, uh, yeah, we'll be titled QF, in Christchurch, uh, the Crusaders surely just keep rolling. It's, I mean, they'll have, they've had a week off, so they've, they've you know, they'll be fresh and, and ready to go, and they would have done their prep, but, you know, there's nothing like a, a Kiwi derby as well, you know, mm. the, the, the Highlanders are, will, will come there and they'll, they'll fancy their chances. Interesting run in for them though. Um, they lost to the Chiefs when they went away to Suva then pumped the Rebels 66 nil. so you know you could argue they didn't get heaps out of it maybe uh, and then a bye so yeah. you know that's a wobbly old walk into the finals but it's the Crusaders so yeah. you know like if you get a bet against them use someone else's money can't wait to see Sevi Reese go around as well who has emerged as not only a dynamo in attack but can waste people as well how good's he been this year <laughs> Sevu Fiji you like him give over yeah, yeah he's pretty handy he's, uh, wouldn't mind him on my side yeah he's he's red hot so Crusaders v Highlanders uh, we've also got the Jaguares up against the Chiefs over there in BA. The Juarez, impressive last week against the Sunwolves. Uh, they, they finished the season with double-digit wins and uh, potentially, you know, the way they're going, could end up in the big one. Yeah, well, they're at home, aren't they? Yeah. Um, they, they, they've been playing well, and I good luck to the Chiefs. Uh, yeah, well, I, Australians should all be cheering the Chiefs. We're, we're all Chiefs for uh, two hours <laughs> yeah, because yeah. if the Chiefs knock the Jags off yes. and the Brumbies win their game, they get another home semi. Gotcha. So, yeah. um, look, you have to say that the, you, arguably the two form teams right, in, in the last few games is mm. the Chiefs and the Haguaris. So it would be a really interesting encounter. And the Chiefs um, don't mind going there. They've, they've been to Buenos Aires twice. Twice and won twice. I think yeah, they so, won this year over there, didn't they? Um, Am I right in saying that late win this year over there yeah, in BA. There's something yeah, as sure. we saw. Um, unfortunately, there's something impressively resolute about the Chiefs when they get towards the finals, and you know they pumped the Rebels last week. Looked terrific. Um, they're they're a shot. They're a definite shot. But the Jake, the, the Haguaris have been massively improved this year, haven't they? I prefer more, prefer more H in your pronunciation of it. <laughs> and then you just roll the G a little more. Right, it's almost okay. like it's, it's almost like a silent G. Uh, so are then that leaves us Argentinian. That leaves us one final quarter final, and that is the Hurricanes up against the Bulls over at Westpac Stadium. The Hurricanes rumbling home last week to knock off the Blues again. I tell you what, if you had money on the Blues like a number of my friends did, you were smarting mm -hmm. up by 19 at the break. Mm -hmm. Run down and score a second half point. Kane's good. Uh, the Canes are good, and they they've been chopping and changing with their combination, is it? And it's seamless. Those guys who are coming in, so they've got a pr they run a pretty good program over there. And whoever they pick, I'm sure the Barretts will be there. Um, will be pretty handy. Is there a bigger beast in world rugby than Adi Savia? Oh, he's someone else. Mm -hmm. Like, w did you you would have played against him? Yeah, he has absolutely absolute spiders on him. You can't yeah. get him down. But do you think he's, yeah, he's almost go. getting stronger? Yeah. I didn't think it possible, but I think he's the 2019 Artie stronger than the early days Artie. Leg drive, like he just refuses to be and tackled. He's, uh, whip, yeah. Whipping his arms around, yeah. he's like a. It's like, like if, it's like someone up there's playing a uh, computer game with him pressing <laughs> X button. Like he's, he's the Looney Tunes Tazzy yeah. Devil, <laughs> yeah. just a whirl of arms and legs and menace. So they are rightful favourites as well for their game against the Bulls, who come over from Pretoria. Uh, okay, so that's what's to come this weekend. Now a quick look back at what has unfolded for the Aussie teams through Super Rugby 2019. Guys, we'll start with the Waratahs. Pato, I've got you down for your major highlight from the Tars this year. What was your okay, major so, highlight? Uh, I am going to... You've, you've offered us the... the um, We're going to You've given us the, the highlight and the standout player. Yeah, but right, you don't get a time. standout player. You just get a highlight. Okay, I'm going to give you the highlight for the Waratahs. Was hard to go past their win over the Crusaders at the SCG. Mm -hmm. um, 
It was a tough week for the Crusaders. They'd, they'd obviously come off um, a bye following the, the, the awful events in Christchurch. Um, but the Waratahs, you know, they they were immense in defence that, that night um, and they showed a great amount of um, potential at that point. We're all thinking, hey, this is a team that can do something. Um, unfortunately, they didn't go on to, <laughs> to do it, but uh, that night, yeah, that would have been their highlight for the season, I would have thought. And Kibo, your Tars stand out for 2019? Without a shadow of a doubt, Rob Simmons, an unsung hero. He had the line out functioning well. Um, you know, he threw his body into everything in D and hit rocks and, and carried well at times. So with honourable mention of Damien Fitzpatrick and Cam Clark. Rob Simmons gets the pick. Yeah, Fitzy was good this year. I like those selections, guys. Good shout on both fronts. Uh, now we're going to go Reds. Kip, I'm going to stick with you. Your Reds highlight of the year, their best moment of the season. <sighs> Had to be probably the win over in Durban against the Sharks. Um, you know, that, to go over there and win in Durban is a tough place to go, and, and, and they did that. Um, and Taniella Tupo. Yeah, well, I will... See your Taniela Tupo. I'll throw my standout player. Uh, obviously, Samu Kareb. We talk about him every week. He's been freaky. But Isaac Rodder. Mm. Isaac Rodder even got a little... Really? Oh, he was just Is huge. he your standout over Samu? Well, can I... I'm going to... No, 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 no. We're pair. pin you down. No. <laughs> okay. Well, then Samu's obviously the standout. <laughs> yeah. With honourable mention to Isaac Rodder, who overcome awful um, personal tragedy earlier in the year in the lead-up to that game against the Highlanders, where they very nearly beat the Highlanders away from home. And he even got a taste of captaincy this year, Isaac Rodder. So yeah. he was my uh, second to Samu, who I can't believe he's leaving can Australian I, can shores. I, can I hijack your, your segment here? Go. Throwing an honourable mention. Go. Liam Wright, I thought. Yeah, he can play. He can play. He's, he's a... He's a He's a, he's a workhorse yeah. and consistently came up with big plays. Well, he was huge in that win for the Reds against the Sharks, man of the match in that game. So now to the Rebels. Uh, I've got them in. I've got my You're highlight the for the Rebels. Go. Yeah. I'll go their win against the Brumbies in Canberra this year. Not been an easy place to win the last little bit, Canberra, mm. for opposing teams. They got it done by seven in that one there. And that was the part of the season when we thought, oh, here we go, the Rebels are going to finish top of the Aussie Conference. Wrong. Mm. Uh, it was the Brumbies in the end. And, Pato, your Rebels stand out I'm going to go with uh, former Brumbies player Issy Nicerani. Uh, I don't think there were too many better Rebels than him week in, week out. Um, and even in that, you know, after they fell off a cliff in the midway through the season, he kept putting in. And uh, I won't be surprised to see him wearing gold. This year. Is he nice and running? Oh, Kib, I'll let you, because we've kept that nice, short, sharp, and punchy, you can throw in one of your own. The Rebels, <sighs> Rebels highlight and or standout from 2019. I'll, I'll throw in a highlight and I'll have to say the start of the season. But yeah. I'm not going to yeah. pick a standout. Okay. It was a strong start to the season. Speaking of strong guys, the Australian 20 <laughs> team have won through yes. to their first final in nine years I think since 20, 2010 yeah. since 2010 was so the last time that they were in the big dance uh, this is huge news coming out of Argentina this morning they rolled the locals to get the win in Rosario I think it was mm -hmm. uh, where they got it done against a very good Argentinian side and this is a team that is giving us some great hope for the future uh, they will take on France in the big Ooh. one after they put away South Africa. Defending champs. Yep. Uh, all the more impressive, Shawnee, um, for those who didn't see it, that they were down to 14 men for an entire half mm -hmm. uh, after the halfback um, was it. sent Huge off for a second yellow card. Yeah. Um, yeah, as you say, mate, you know, great, great signs, and we've talked about them a little bit. This isn't a star studded team. There aren't a lot of guys. Isaac Lucas is maybe the one guy who you've heard of. The rest of them are. Um, good young talents who've come through the system and have just started becoming a team, right? Yeah. And it's so impressive to see them turn up to a match that, that, that plenty of people probably don't expect them to win and keep getting the job done. Yeah, I think, you know, the conditions were poor over there. And then, as you said, you know, there was, there was a red card on the stroke of half time. And, mm. you know, they, they found a way for a young Aussie side. Um, you know, a lot of teams I've seen in the past have rolled over when you've only got 14 men. But they, yeah. they found... They found another gear. Their forward pack were exceptional. That front row, um, led with Fraser McRide as well, um, were, were very, very good. Isaac Lucas, as you mentioned before, stepped in at halfback and he was seamless. He went in there um, for ten minutes, and, and you know he was um, he was very good. You know the leadership that they have there mm. when going down to well, fourteen they even, men. They, they were without the 
first choice 10 as well, um, Will Harrison, who was injured. He had concussion. So Ben Donaldson, who's another Tars yeah. um, junior rising through the ranks, stepped in and um, scored a lovely try in, in the home of Lionel Messi. Uh, yeah. Rosario. He, he towed a ball ahead and uh, another lovely touch and, and scored a pretty crucial try. He did, and that came off the back of a turnover from you know McRight. Fraser, from yeah. Fraser McWright. You know, he, so I think that, you know, as I said, mentioned about their forward pack, they were exceptional. They really were. Um, and they're going to be need to be, uh, they're going to need to get up for that, and I'm sure they will in that final against France. Well, let me, um, seeing as Sean's on Instagram, let well, me no, um, just mate, to keep talking. Hang on a second. <laughs> I'm just going back to 2010 now. We're gonna, I'm hoping right. that our fan man, our producer, will have overlaid all that with match highlights from this morning. So that'll be sweet. And I'm just going back to the 2010 uh, Aussie 20s team. So they, they went down in the big one there to a New Zealand team that also contained Julian Sevilla on the wing and Tyler mm. Bladen Hall in at fly half. But they would have, I'm just trying to think back, Kibo, who would have been in that 2010 yeah, we Aussie side? We had a look side. at that team earlier. Who'd you have? Um, Wasn't it Hallwell check? and... No, 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 they're dead no, well and truly gone. It was, it was Hooper, uh, Matt Tamua. Um, there's a bunch of names. Um, I'll insert them. <laughs> I'll insert yeah, okay. them with uh, with a bit of post. But, 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 um, but they were names who then went on to become mainstays of Super Rugby and yep. uh, another Certainly. Wallabies yeah, as Nick well. Nick White was in there. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll get it up. I've got sent the team. So, the when you, so when you've got those guys to look back on as a reference point for now, Kibo, that obviously also means that you're going to be seeing a lot of these guys in years to come at that top level. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, these guys now, I think, in the next couple of years, will start to get a taste of Super Rugby. And um, you know, as I said, when you go down to 14 men, um, you often can get rumbled. These yep. guys didn't. They stood up and yep. they fronted up, and that's the most positive side. So the pathway's good. Let me just give one um, ounce of. Uh, hope and optimism to the Reds fans because all those back rowers are young Queens. Harry Wilson as well, Harry number Wilson, eight. Saw him last year. Um, you've, we talked about Liam Wright's already, and he's not, that, he's not much older than the yes. rest of them. Yeah. Um, uh, you, you know, you've got, some, you've got the, the, the makings of some top-notch Super Rugby players in the future and, and they're all up there in Queensland. So. so they play against their final, play their final against rather France, which will be Sunday morning Sydney time, I think around 2 o'clock Sunday morning Sydney time uh, over there in Argentina. So we wish them well back here at home. I wanted to bring this one up because it was an extraordinary finish to Shoot Shield action at the weekend. The televised game was West v Norse. We know how good Norse have been in recent times. West have been a little bit below their best, currently sitting 10th or were sitting 10th on the ladder heading to that game at the weekend. The only reason I want to bring it up guys uh west scored 24 points in the last like 13 minutes to roll north is it was extraordinary late field goal to seal it was 37 37 40 37 full time humming amazing finishes in the shoot shield and it's That's open just, uh, yeah it's that, an open shoot shield um we saw um the the derby the beaches derby yeah was um was one late as well, wasn't it? So, Rats rumbled home after. Um, that's a good sign. 29. It's a good sign of, as you say, it's open. It's a, it's a good contest, and it's great to see Wests doing well. Right, mm. there's been a bit of drama out there about um, you know financial stability, etc., yep. etc., and they've got themselves a, a good program rolling nicely. So it's an open competition, the Shoot Shield Queensland competition. It continues to uh, to tick along as well, man. Some really close results on the weekend up there as well, fellas. Brothers, though, come out the other side as winners. They just continue on their merry way at the top of the Queensland Prep Cop. Yeah, brothers are pretty dominant. You know, it's my old club, so it's good to see them firing. Um, you know, they've got a pretty pretty dominant forward pack again. That scrum of theirs keeps um, keeps going along nicely. And Bond knocked over GPS, and GPS are one of the better teams, so uh, good result for Win Bond. Win for the boys out of the yeah. Goldie. Love Bond Uni. Uh, also love, men what uh, is happening at the moment, the Wallabies Gold Blooded Tour rolling out across the country, most likely coming to a town or regional centre near you because they appear to be heading everywhere. They've just ticked off Ayers Rock. This is where Justin Harrison is at the moment. He was Ayers Rock with um, which of the Ella brothers well, did I see well, with? I, I, he was there with Glenn Ella. But sure. we'll start in Darwin and we can show you some footage of um, Gulg uh, bearing his, his bare chest to That's jump right. in the cage with, with, um, with, with Bernie shot, with Larkham. Yeah. With the crocodile. Yeah. crocodile, with the croc, yeah, yeah. Crocosaurus. Um, and, and quite fancied a bit of a bit of Gulg's midriff. Well, he, to have well, a he's, he's <laughs> self-described. This is Justin Harrison. Self-describes himself as a pregnant snake. Right. And yes. you're dangling a pregnant snake in front of a in front of a croc. Well, the funny part was North that uh, croc. that Bernie, you, <laughs> you know, know? Ice, ice nerves Bernie, who famously kicked us a, a 
drop goal to get us through the 99 semi-final. Bernie had a bit of a, a wobble trying to get into the tank. He, he, he had a bit of claustrophobia oh, and a bit of... That's uh, an anxiety spike. Yeah, that's, Not a chance. And, uh, yeah, and, <laughs> Not a and chance. He, and he, he, just, he said later on, he, when he did some media, he still had the jelly legs going. Yeah, right. So. I'll be crawling across mm. the ground again into the <laughs> tank, wouldn't you? Like, yeah. There's no way. There's no way I'm risking that. So they are... Spreading the Wallabies' love across the next few weeks. I think it's a 68-day tour. Six, 60 days, yeah. Look, the basic, the basic um, gist of it is getting around the country in a World Cup year, um, doing lots of clinics with kids, lots of coaching, um, going out to the local footy clubs. Um, all these classic Wallabies, um, you know, getting out and sort of sharing stories. And as, as um, Google likes to say, you know, to, to reconnect that golden thread that runs through the whole country in a World Cup year. You know, it's, it's, it's um, the Wallabies is everyone's team, right? They're doing well and doing good things on that front. And if you want to check out where they're off to next, just hit up the Wallabies Facebook page. It's probably the best place for people to... a good to, place to start or you can... To get uh, a start. You can check out on rugby.com.au. Or well, maybe well. we can, uh, rugby.com.au. Right or I'm happy to give you Justin Harrison's number and you can just give him a note directly. <laughs> yep. uh, guys, that's us. That's another wrap. Kibo, five-star performance again from you. Expecting nothing less if you pop up again here. Pato, thank you to you thank for you, your Shirley. company. Here's hoping the Brumbies can get it done and give us another week of Super Rugby to cheer here in Australia. Till next time, I'm Sean Maloney, and that is our most recent Rugby Nation all wrapped up.